Hey there, Janae with Pale and Projects here, and in this week's video, I'm gonna be making a baby book. This is a unique gift idea that I like to give uh, my friends who are expecting or who have um, a big moment in their life in order for them to get them to print those pictures that they captured in that time in their life and uh, print them and display them. Uh, you know, you can go to a, basically any craft store or um, you know any store and just pick up a photo album but I find that uh, making it a little more personable um, just gives it that extra little touch so uh, this is what I'm gonna be doing today um, is just showing you how to make one of these so uh, this one um, was made for uh, my daughter um, you can see that it has frilly little lace Precious Moment fabric, and then um, we did glue on a little heart um, gem with some ribbon, uh, some ribbon to hold it shut. So if we untie the ribbon and open it up, you can see that there's a whole bunch of pages in here. So this is, um, here you go. This is just one way that, um, you know, I, um, I, again, I think it's a nice personalized gift to give to them. I don't think many people think to do this, um, at least not in my experience. And, um, you know, when we have given these in the past, they've been very well appreciative um, of, of this gift and I enjoy them as well. You know, they're, like I said, they're a unique idea and you can personalize them to whatever you want. So, um, this, like I said, this one has precious moments. I do have a second one whoo, right here. Um, so it can be as big. This is, I believe, a three inch binder. Um, as big as you want to do it. Um, obviously, the bigger you go, uh, the more fabric you're going to have to, um, the, the more fabric you're gonna have to buy. So I tend to shop in, um, Joann's has like a, plush baby fabric section. Um, I tend to shop in that area um, and then I, I try to stock up on this um, kind of fabric when they have sales. So around the holidays or if I have a coupon um, or just, you know, something to that uh, effect. So the supplies you'll need um, for an average size binder, um, I believe this is a one and a half inch or a one inch binder. Um, for that you will need a yard of fabric. So I have chosen pink because they are expecting a little baby girl. So um, just a fun pink, hot pink fabric. Um, it shows up a little bit hotter pink on the camera than what it is in real life. But um, so I'm going to do hot pink fabric. I have uh, two yards of ribbon. Um, you get this ribbon in, uh, it's usually like an aisle off of the fabric section, and they're these big giant rolls, um, and you just ask for two yards when you're getting your fabric cut. So um, again, a yard of the fabric, two yards of ribbon, um, a nice fun ribbon as well uh, to be the tie to close it shut. So I'm gonna use this black and white ribbon that I think is really cute. Um, you can use either, um, like the manila folders, uh, the drawer folder, so the, um, like if you have a cabinet and you have the pocket, uh, folders, uh, for that, you can use that. Um, I'm going to be using a cardboard box today. I'm going to be cutting, um, squares out of the cardboard box for the inside. So to cover up the inside of the three ring um, binder right here, this piece here, um, I'm gonna be using cardboard, but like I said, you can use a uh, manila folder or uh, the pocket folders that go into filing cabinets. Um, I just have extra boxes, so I'm gonna be utilizing what I have on hand. And then, uh, so I'm gonna be using that. I have hot glue that's uh, warming up, a hot glue gun, a pair of scissors so that I can cut the fabric. And then I have a giant box of, oh it grows, um, just poly fluff. 
Um, it's a polyfill. It's um, you can get it at Joann's or Michael's or any craft store. I think they sell it at uh, Walmart and Home Depot. Uh, not Home Depot. Woo. Um, Walmart and Target. Um, basically, any store will have this. I uh, bought a 10 pound box of it because I, I felt like I was doing baby books like every week there for a while or not just baby books but um, you know memory books uh, there for a while so I just bought a, a big container of it while it was on sale at Joann's um, but it can come in you know little little bags like that um, I would say probably one to two pounds of fluff depending on how fluffy you want your uh, book to be um, I just kind of go and fill it to the desired fluffiness that I want and then I stop. So um, like I said, one to two pounds is kind of a guesstimate for me, but I think that would probably just about do it. Um, and then a folder, um, a three ring binder. So uh, that's what I use to make the books. And then I fill it with a variety of stuff. I go and find stickers that are on sale. So baby stickers, star stickers, heart stickers, uh, alphabet ones, um, anything that is themed specifically for that book it are all great options. Uh, and then I usually pick up a packet of multicolored paper. Um, so if it like, this one's a, a baby girl, so I picked up a multi-packet of pinks. And you know, if it was a boy, I would pick up multicolored blues or greens, um, or just a multi, you know, a rainbow packet too. It works just fine as well. So just to give them, uh, you know, just a, a little start to their uh, scrapbook as well. Um, if I can find a picture of it, I did do um, an army book. Um, my friend's son, uh, went to basic training and boot camp and I made her a book to keep his pictures that she got um, in that and all of the you know the, the letters that they sent back and forth um, for her to preserve those so um, like I said you know it's pretty well personable um, or personalized uh, for the the army book I did not put lace around the edge um, I thought that might be a little f too frilly but um, for the baby books for the boys I do put um, a variety um, I've done green I've done yellow um, I've done uh, zoo themed I've done frog themed um, you know just basically anything themed towards what they're um, going for for either the baby's room um, their baby shower theme or something to that effect um, you know you can go more neutral with the yellows and browns and um, you know those type of uh, fabrics or you can go more feminine if you know it's a girl or more masculine if you know it's a boy you know whatever you feel like really um, when I say personalize it really get into it and, and make it a little more personable because it's it's a lot of fun so um, but let's get into it first thing I'm gonna do clear my spot I'm going to open up, again, this is a, a yard of fabric. I'm gonna put the, the good side, so the side that I want, the print side, uh, the side that I want to be facing out, down. And then I'm going to take my binder and lay it flat. Just open like that. Um, I'm going to give it a little bit of a border around the edge so that I can put a line of hot glue here and then fold it over. I am going to cut right here so I can tuck that fabric in and hot glue it on both sides, but I'm going to actually, we'll do this to save fabric. Do it this way. Okay, that's a little bit better. Save a little more fabric, I think. Um, Okay, so I have my border, okay? And then we'll just fold it and hot glue it. Do it on three sides. So we're gonna do the top and the sides. And then we're going to stuff um, on the bottom here. We're gonna hold it up and stuff um, the poly in. And then we'll fold this side up and glue it, okay? So right now I'm gonna take my scissors and cut my rectangle out and 
just like that. Set this, set your extra fabric aside because we'll, we'll get into that later. Don't throw it away. I'm going to cut two slits at the center. Okay, and that is just to get that so that we can just glue that right up there. Okay, uh, my hot glue gun is hot. So, let's get some hot glue out here. I'm gonna be generous with the hot glue too um, because I want this to stay. Um, so I really wanna make sure that it stays. Be careful when you're using hot glue, it is hot. I always um, try and use uh, extra glue stick to help me um, make sure that the fabric is pushed down because I don't want to burn my fingers. Um, let's make sure you um, secure the corners of your fabric so that it doesn't come up. So we're going to Push that under, just like that. Okay, hot glue the top on this side. There we go, take my hot glue stick and push down. There we go. For the corners, I just fold the corners in. You can either um, kind of, you can do whatever you want basically here. Um, just make sure that it's semi-clean. You're really not gonna see it. Um, but what I do is I, typically I fold the corner in and then I fold it over like that to make that rounded corner there. So let me put some glue here. Again, I am being very generous with the glue. Fold down and fold over. Okay, taking my glue stick. Okay, come in here, put a little extra piece of glue so that flap stays down. Now onto this corner, again, fold down and over just like that. Let me grab another glue stick. Let that fold down and fold over. Okay. Put some more glue in here. There we go, fold over. Um, now I didn't pull this super tight, so I, I do have some flexibility because I wanted to leave some extra room on the front side for the poly, the polyfill to make sure it's nice and fluffy. Um, before I polyfill it, I do um, want to get this piece in there and glued in, um, just because sometimes with the poly, the flaps, under the three ring portion can sometimes be a pain. So I'm gonna glue that in. Ooh, that was toasty. Toasty, toasty. So here's my poly. Um, I'm just going to fluff it to about the size that I want. So that looks good for that side. And maybe a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so my poly is roughly laid out. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it off, flip it over, and then I'm going to stuff. Just like that. See how it's kind of making the book have uh, a 3D appearance? I like it, I think it's cute. Not. 
three ring binders, um, I try, because these can be, you know, relatively expensive. I don't think they're that expensive if you find them on sale. Um, but I try and uh, recycle. So if I have um, a whole bunch of like three ring binders, um, I used a ton for college. Um, I saved all of those and removed my college material. Uh, I had, um, you know, my past work was throwing away a whole bunch of three ring binders. Um, so I took those and I have them in a tote in the garage that I use it out of. So basically, if I can recycle a three ring binder, I try to, um, rather than going out and buying a brand new one. So I, I tend to work with what I have. Okay, so um, we are filled with poly. I'm going to start in the middle. And this is, again, why I wanted a lot of uh, glue, was to keep that poly in. Put it on the corner there. There we go. Um, and we're going to take that fabric and fold it over. Okay. This, again, um, this these corners kind of get a little rough to work on, so... We're just gonna do the best we can. Um, like I said before, you're not gonna see these corners. We're gonna cover them up here in a moment. So uh, let's flip this over so I have my hot glue a little closer. There we go. Fold it in and there we go. Fold it in. And over. There we go. And there. So this is where I said um, you know you want to be mindful of your corners and make sure that you get your corners glued down properly. Um, if this corner right here doesn't get glued down properly, um, you do have the potential of this coming apart. So I'm going to put a little bit extra glue and it always, um, it always starts to come apart if it has right at the um, three ring part. So I, I try to pay special attention to this area and just make it look a little nicer. Now while that dries, I am going to make my inner pieces. So I am just going to cut this box down. is a little different usually the binders fold in on the three ring part um, or the clasp part um, this one doesn't this one folds over uh, so I am going to try and utilize this uh, inseam to account for that Again, this part doesn't have to be super nice. Um, try and make it as nice as possible, but we're gonna cover this up, so. Okay, that fits perfect. Now this side. Okay. 
paused for a second to clean up um, so I didn't get that fluff absolutely everywhere. Um, one of the reasons why I say um, like a manila folder or the filing cabinet uh, folders work best is um, with a typical three ring binder, uh, one side is is typically enough so all you have to do is cut the manila folder uh, down the center and then it fits perfectly so it just worked that I had an extra box on hand and uh, you know this is a little bit uh, of a unique situation so um, again with uh, these um, you want to try and get it as close to in uh, or under the three ring um, clasps as possible to cover up uh, your folder. Uh, another reason why I chose one of the red ones that I had saved is because red is relatively close to pink and if I don't get it fully under, um, you know, it's not that big of a deal, so. Uh, but we don't want this nasty looking cardboard on the inside of our scrapbook. So let's set our scrapbook aside and bring back our yard of fabric. This is where, um, you know, that yard of fabric might have seemed um, a little excessive for covering the, the uh, three ring binder, but we're going to also cover our cardboard pieces. I will have extras, um, as you can see. I, I'm going to have a decent amount of extras. Um, you know, I I do a yard just because it's easier. A, a yard of fabric and two yards of um, of ribbon. I do that just for easy measurements. Um, it's easy for me to remember. It works. Um, I you know I'll utilize this extra fabric in other projects if I'm quilting or if I have um, you know if I want to make a scarf or something like that, a baby blanket, a receiving blankets, or you know I can use uh, or I can make receiving blankets out of this. Um, you know this one piece um, and actually I could probably yeah. Um, this one piece would make a pretty good size or two receiving blankets. Um, and so that's typically what I do. If you want to try and do three quarters of a yard or I, I would be a little hesitant to do a half a yard, but I, you possibly could make it work. Um, I just, again, do the yard of material for, um, ease of remembering of, uh, measurements. So, um, I realized that this little piece down here will fit perfectly on here. So we're going to cut that across. I really try and save what I can, um, you know, and utilize what I can here, um, because I do use the extra in other projects. So, uh, you know, making sure that I am cutting correctly and, just utilizing everything that I can is um, a big win for me. So here, here's the size of the extra fabric. You know, it's it's not huge, but you know, it's a decent amount. So I will um, probably make my friend a receiving blanket on top or um, a changing blank, a changing pad blanket. Uh, so that you know her little one doesn't have to be touching the changing tables in restrooms or something like that So I think that's probably a big enough piece for me to do that with um, I am going to Glue on all four sides This just has the fabric so I I'm still being fairly generous with the hot glue, but not as generous as I was with the um, poly side of it. Um, let me put a couple dabs on each corner. Okay, fold down. Fold down and over. Fold down and over. There we go. Down and over. Uh, again, you know, you're not going to see this part of it, so I'm not being, um, you know, super precise. Um, I still want it to hold together. Um, but yeah, 
not super precise, which is okay. Next side, more glue. Um, and you know, if you're gonna do all four sides at once, you're gonna wanna be fairly fast. Uh, hot glue, yes, it is hot, uh, but it does dry fairly quickly as well, so. Um, just be mindful of that. There we go. Ooh, that was hot. Yep. There we go. Okay, so the fronts of these look like that. I am going to bring back my uh, three ring binder. I'm gonna let these dry, my inserts here dry a little bit, and I'm gonna bring in my, uh, my ribbon. So um, the ribbon, <coughs> I like to have the starting point on the back side. So here are my pocket folders. So this is right side up. So when I close it, they're gonna open it this way. So I'm going to start my frilly ribbon here on the back side and on the bottom. I feel that this is the least conspicuous place to start it. You can honestly start it wherever. Um, this is something that I do not glue all the way around first. Um, I start with a little bit of glue just like this. I am being fairly generous with this glue as well. Um, you know, I'm giving it a little bit more uh, because I want it to stay. Um, and this is the only thing, I'm going to glue these on top, but I, you know, I really wanna make sure that this ribbon doesn't come off because that's, that's not fun and it's not pretty. So I'm being really generous with the glue and um, you know, I'm making sure that that glue does not uh, dry and I'm doing little sections at a time. When I come to a corner, I just glue around the corner and go up. and just turn the ribbon around the corner like that. Now, if you got a uh, silky ribbon like I did, it's got that smooth surface. As soon as you touch the hot glue to it, uh, you're going to see a mark. So be very careful with the silky ribbon. Um, if you use lace, um, like I showed you on the other book, that's a little more forgiving, but this, uh, this ribbon I feel does, um, you know, it, it doesn't lend well to mistakes. So you wanna be very precise with it when you're gluing it down. I'm not pulling the ribbon tight either. Um, you know, I'm, I'm giving it a little bit of give. Um, and that just, you know, allows for the opening. Ooh, that's hot. Hot glue. Um, it allows for the opening and closing of the book as well. the cobwebs.
So I'm just coming to the end here. I'm gonna finish this side and then I'm gonna connect it. So I'm gonna come around the corner again. And then I'll show you how I end the ribbon. I do overlap the ribbon just a little bit so that it blends in and then I do put a pretty significant amount of glue there as well because um, you know once that end of that ribbon pops off um, it's hard because we're gonna do those overlays um, it's hard for it to stay on so I, I really like to uh, make sure that that's secured. Okay, so now we're gonna try and tuck um, these pieces of cardboard under the three ring binder. And you can see, um, you know, this overlays the ribbon and kind of it, it'll secure it just that that much more. So I have a little bit of area in here that the ribbon's kind of coming up, so I need a little more glue on that. There. So um, I'm gonna hot glue these pieces in, and I'm going to use a probably a, a full stick of glue um, for each insert. And I am just going to lay it on as thick as I can. There's the start of it. Oh, wrong side. The wrong one. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna try and force this under there. Just like that. I really try to pay close attention to the edges on these. Um, these are a little bit more uh, forgiving to secure if they pop off, but just to make sure that they don't pop off, use a lot of glue. So my mom, um, you know, like I said, these aren't just for baby books. My mom used these for our sports books um, and she would just get sports fabrics. Uh, you know, she would still put a little bit of ribbon around the outside and have a little fun with it. Um, but, you know, they're a unique way to scrapbook and to keep your scrapbooks. Um, they're also fun to look at when they're all lining um, the shelf in your closet or on your bookshelf. Um, you know, it's a little bit, I'm not saying that there's not nice uh, photo albums out there, but it's just something different and I, I think it's something a little prettier um, to look at. So, um, same with this one, I'm gonna make sure you know, it's butted up as, as best I can. And then, um, this needs a little bit of glue. Um, this type of ribbon has a double side because it is uh, more of like a sewing ribbon. Um, and that can be a little bit of a problem because it has the two sides on it. Uh, I just tend to glue the two sides together. So it's not a big deal. Or at least I don't think it's a big deal. So. Um, paying particularly close attention to the corners, adding in that extra glue up on the corners and then in the center so that it doesn't pop off. There. And then on the edges, just a lot of glue, just to secure it. Um, you know, I don't so much, I used to worry about putting glue in the center. I don't so much uh, worry about that anymore. Um, I don't know, it's just my style, I guess, these days. Um, I have come to realize that the edges and um, right up against this three ring uh, holder are, um, you know, more important. 
So then I'm just going to come in here and finish the edge off. Just trying to get as much glue in there as possible. So I always do this, and I always forget, um, as I'm putting the glue in here, I should get my ribbon in to hold it shut. So you don't have to have ribbon. Um, this one, I, I probably need ribbon. It's a little stiff. They do kind of work themselves out, um, but you can see it kind of wants to pop open there. Um, so I'm going to take out my ribbon. I thought that this would be just a cute little um, accent piece. Um, so I want enough to be able to basically uh, double knot, just like that. So this is probably too much because I'm not going to be uh, looping it. Here we go. And then cut that in half. There we go. Okay, so we're gonna try and stick, ooh, nice little cobweb there. Glue web. We're going to just stick in a whole bunch of glue right in the center area. And then stick in this, let's use scissors. Another glue stick. Maybe not. Make sure that it's that lined up and level. And then just a whole bunch of glue. Right in there. And then where's my other piece? There's my other piece. in with some scissors. That should be enough. Stick a little more glue in here on this side. To secure it. And then let's check this side out. Pull off all the cobwebs you can. Okay. There you go. So when you close it, and you, looks like we need to glue that a little bit. Run out of hot glue. So since this was braided uh, ribbon, I'm just securing the end so it doesn't fray. Just like that. Okay. Take off the cobweb. Okay, so when you close it, you can double knot it. Just like that. Voila. So there's my little book. And 
if you look in here, I'm trying to find the overlap part right there. See, it camouflages itself pretty well. So, especially with the frilly fabrics um, or the frilly ribbons for the edges, it really uh, it camouflages itself pretty nicely. So, uh, let me go and show you. Grab the stuff that I am going to put with this baby book for their baby gift. I did not put a gem on this one. Um, if you did want to, you can just pick up any kind of button that fits the theme or um, just like a little gem. Um, this one has a flower on it. Uh, the Precious Moment one, like I said, had a heart on it. Um, so I could have done something cute right here. All you do with that is you, you get a button, um, a cute button, and you just hot glue it on. It is merely for decoration and just that. So um, you can also... Uh, iron on transfer something if you want to put like the baby's name or um, you know if you're giving this after the baby is born um, you know their their statistics um, so their weight their length um, their birthday uh, you can iron on a picture and frame that hot glue that picture frame in if you'd like um, you know throughout the years we've gotten really uh, creative with it to make it personalized for the individual that we've been giving them to so um, so anywho this is the book like I said we uh, tied it shut um, I'm gonna put this into uh, a bag uh, for you know to give them. Um, I did pick up a variety of stickers. So there's a little, you know, little stork stickers. Um, it's a girl because it is a girl. Uh, little baby bottles, pacifiers, and then um, just, uh, you know, a few, few more fun um, baby girl stickers. So um, that one has borders. So, um, as you can tell, I really enjoy doing this. Um, you, uh, other sticker ideas are um, stars, uh, hearts, stuff like that are good filler stickers. So let me put those in here. Um, I did pick up a multicolored packet of paper for her to print her pictures and stick them on. Um, and then obviously decorate with the stickers uh, that I'm giving her or, you know, if she finds other stickers. And then um, I crochet uh, baby blankets to put with them as well. So she has a crocheted baby blanket. Um, this is just a, it's a simple, easy blanket, crocheted blanket, um, double crochets. And I think I do 50 wide and then I just uh, do however long I feel and then put a, a three length um, double crocheted border of multicolor on it. So um, I don't do specific like boy girl blankets. I do yellow blankets because I can make a ton in the winter and then have them stocked up. And then when, um, you know, friends or family members um, are expecting, then I just pull them out and put them in the bucket or put them in the, the bag for them. So let me stick this in here as well. So um, this is uh, my... Oh, I'm gonna have to re reorg. Um, this is what I give for uh, babies, though, um, or expecting families, uh, expecting friends, family members. Um, you know, a, a nice uh, cozy blanket for the little one, and then a nice way to keep all of their keepsakes uh, for mommy and daddy. So, isn't that a cute little bag? I thought that was adorable as well. So. Um, I hope you enjoyed watching me uh, make this uh, cute little baby gift. Um, if you have any thoughts or questions, please put them in the comments below, and we'll see you in the next project. Bye, guys.